Welcome to a video on open circuit time constant analysis or in short OCTC. This is for high frequency analysis. So we are going to look at how this method works and how we do derivations. So first off, open circuit time constant method is to determine time constants for each capacitor. Right, and then fire frequency of amplifier will be 2 pi and the sum of all the time constants like here. Now, this method will work mostly like other methods and we will find the small signal model or low frequency capacitors will become short circuits and you will evaluate each high frequency capacitor separately and the capacitors not in use are considered to be open circuits. Right, now where the difference comes in is right here. We will be replacing the capacitor under review with a voltage current source. So it's a current source which has a voltage drop across it and if we divide the two we can find some resistance seen by the capacitor right so this is mainly used for those awkward capacitors like c mu um so capacitors that you're not really sure of what they are seeing in parallel with themselves this is a good method to use okay so this is typically the way that you apply it, but the CMU is, is the wrong, um, not the wrong, the, the difficult capacitor, if I can put it that way. So, let's have a look at our common emitter circuit here. So we have a, a current source here and a voltage source and some DC sources, so all low frequency capacitors become shorts. So this terminal will be grounded. This capacitor will remain. That one is a short. VCC becomes a ground. You get the picture. Um, you've done this many times. So the high frequency model for our common emitter amplifier will look like this, where Rx from here to here is our transistor model. And we need to deal with C mu. Okay, so for our first analysis, we are gonna leave out C pi and we are gonna leave out C load. So our model will look something like this. We will replace our C mu value with a voltage current source and note the orientation of the voltage, the polarities, and we have a V pi in this position over here, and it's important to note that because we have G and V pi for this current source. Okay, so we must keep track of V pi. It will feature in the analysis of the circuit. Okay, and then lastly I defined just where V out is and a polarity for it. Okay, so this looks kind of complicated. We can dumb it down a little bit to this model down here. Note that V pi is sitting from this point to ground. So it's also sitting from this point to ground over here, right? Because Rx plus the parallel combination of Rs and Rb is in parallel with R pi. So we can call that Rs prime and we know that V pi is sitting across Rs prime. So this combination right here. On the output side, V out is over all three of these components, R load, Rc and R out is in parallel. So R load can be made just R load prime. And now we have a much more simplified model to work with to determine the resistance seen by this here source. 
So our goal is to find Vx over Ix. So the first thing that we can do is we can see that there is a voltage drop here and a voltage drop here, plus minus, plus minus. And the one with the same orientation is at V out. So these two voltages is equal to that voltage. So V out is Vx plus V pi. The second thing that you can do is we can look at it with the eyes of Kirchhoff's current law. Into this node we have Ix flowing into it. We have GMV pi flowing out of it. And we have a current flowing in this resistor over here. So we can call that V out over our load. Okay, so Ix is GMV pi plus V out over our load prime. Lastly, we need some definition of our pi extra, right? We have a couple of unknowns. If we look at this equation, we have V out that we don't need in the final, and we have V pi that we don't need in the final. This equation, we have Ix what, that we need, V pi that's not needed, and V out that is not needed. Right, so we can pretty much have to find a third equation to help ourselves out with V pi or V out. I think this one over here is helping out to V out already. So if we apply Ohm's law in this resistor over here, note that current should be flowing in this direction, but with voltage current source, it's flowing in a different direction. So if you want to define the voltage here, V pi is equal to minus Ix multiplied with Rs prime. So this negative is because it's flowing in a different direction than it should with our voltage applied over there. Okay, so if we take equation 2 over here, it has Ix already, it has V pi and it has V out. We can take the same approach using equation 1. I find it's easier to use this second one over here. We have V out here and we can put it right into this spot. So then we will have Vx over R load prime and V pi over R load prime like that we have down here. Now we have Ix in equation, Vx in the same equation, which is important. We need to have both if we, this up here is our goal. And we need to deal with V pi. So to deal with V pi is we plug V pi that we have in the third equation in there and we get this monstrosity over here. But now we have Ix's and Vx and the rest is constants. So we can get all the Ix's alone. So if we take them over to that side, these negatives will become positives. And then we can take out Ix. And what we find when we take Ix out is GMRS, uh, RS over R load and a one. But if we multiply with R load throughout the equation, that one will disappear. We have the multiplication of R load extra here, and this Ix is also multiplied with R load prime. So we will have the end of GM RS R load plus RS plus R load. And if we divide with Ix to this side, we will have our final impedance Rx. And this Rx is the impedance being seen by C mu. OK, 
Okay, so for the time constant for C mu is Rx times C mu. Now we can go through the same process for Rs and the same process for R load, replacing the capacitors with a voltage current source. But the one thing that I can note is if we take this away, this will be open circuit again. And C pi is sitting this side and C load is sitting this side. And interesting enough, C pi will be sitting alone this side with RS. So it's not needed to go through the whole rigmarole of placing a voltage current source or something like that on that side. We know that C pi is seeing RS prime. We've seen that in all the other problems as well. Okay, so C pi is not a capacitor that's in a troubling position like C mu. Same with the load capacitor. It's just R load prime multiplied by C load. And that is the open circuit time constant for common emitter amplifiers. You won't typically use this in a common base. You won't typically use this in a common collector. This is mainly for that pesky C mu capacitor in the common emitter amplifier. Yeah, you might use it in, in some of the other amplifier configurations, gas codes and such, but not in the lower levels. So this is a good technique to know when you're doing multiple transistors in a, in a single um, circuit or a single configuration. This is quite quite handy, but other than that, only the common emitter amplifier. Thank you for watching and see you in a, again in the next video.